I finally made it after three days of sailing. Holy shit. In this video, we're going to tell you everything there is about traveling to Antarctica for dirt cheap. Hi, we are Smriti and Karthik and we have been traveling the Pan American Highway for the past three plus years and we are going to share everything about Antarctica which was our end destination. Okay, so let's get started. Where is Antarctica? Please do not confuse this to Arctic which is in the north. Antarctica is in the southern tip. To get here, you will need to travel to Argentina and from Buenos Aires, the capital, you can take a charter flight to the southernmost town in the world called Ushuaia. There are two ways to get to Antarctica. First is you can take a ship and sail through the dreaded Drake Passage for two days and get to Antarctica. The other option is you can actually do a charter flight from Ushuaia and completely skip the Drake Passage and get to the South Sweden Islands. But that option is extremely expensive and we are not going to discuss that because this is a video about budget travel. If you're like us, you can travel by road all the way from North America to Ushuaia and take three years. That is also an option. We are in the southernmost city of South America called Ushuaia. And right now we're at the port where we're about to take our 11 day cruise to Antarctica. Oh my God. We're moving, we're moving. We are finally sailing after being on deck for like four hours because of bad weather. We're moving now. We are moving! Antarctica, here we come. Bye dogs! Two days on the Drake Passage. It's gonna be slow and steady move, but we will be there soon. Without getting too scientific about this explanation, this is basically where the three main oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, and the Indian Ocean, connect to create a very strong current causing the passage to Antarctica being extremely rough. We have officially started moving, going out into the open waters now. We're quite literally moving like a milkshake at this point. It looks intense. Now there are ways to avoid the seasickness that you will feel in this passage. Mainly people utilize seasickness pills such as Dremeline or they will use sea sickness patches where they will put this patch in the back of their neck and let the medicine drip into their body slowly over the few days. Right now the waves are 5 meter and they can go up to, in, at least in our turn, can go up to 6 to 8 meters. Whoa, look at the back there baby. I'm about to go to sleep. So when is the right time to get to Antarctica? It is obviously in the summer month. Now when you think of summer, it might be opposite of what you're used to. The summer here is actually between November to March. December and January are the peak season because it's holidays in Northern Hemisphere, it's holidays here for summer, so there's a lot of family travels that happens. November and March are little shoulder seasons where it's, it's a little more cooler, so the prices can be lower for these two months. The reason why ships can only enter in summer months is because of the ice sheets that covered Antarctica and the ships can actually not get through and you need the specialized icebreaker ship so that is why summer months is when the ships can actually cruise in the water and cruise through the Antarctica. Other things you have to consider is what you're more inclined to see in nature. For example, penguin mating season is typically between October to December. In these months, you're more likely to see things like nest building, courtship, 
and even egg tending. Now, after December to say February, that's when the eggs are hatching. So you see the baby chicks and them growing up. You are more likely to see all the nurseries with the penguins. This was one of the most incredible encounters of wildlife we saw. This brown bird is called a skua and they're notorious for attacking baby penguins. Watching this family of chinchap penguins fight for the survival of their baby was unreal. And then between February and March is when it's peak whale season. By honestly, I wouldn't worry too much about this because we were there end of December into January and we had seen about 50 whales in one single day. One of the major advantages of Antarctica summer is the fact that there is almost 24 hours of daylight there and you can have multiple excursions throughout the day. I remember we were there for New Year's and it was the strangest experience ever because we rang in New Year's of 2024 at midnight and it was still bright, bright daylight outside. hell outside. Yeah. We did the countdown literally in bright daylight. It was, it was surreal. Happy New Year, baby. <laughs> How crazy is this? It's 2 a.m. It's 2 a.m. It's like bright daylight. Now, how to pick the right ship and what duration to go for. The duration is kind of grouped into two timelines. One is the 11 day and one is the 21 day cruises. The 11 day cruise goes through the Drake Passage, gets you to the Shetland Islands and you explore the northern peninsula of Antarctica. There is a possibility that you may or may not cross into the Antarctic Circle which is the 60 degree latitude. If that's something you want to do, make sure it's in the itinerary and the ship has permission. Not all the ships do that. Our ship did not do that, but regardless, whatever we saw was phenomenal. Now the 21 day option does everything that is included in the 11 day option, but it adds two more islands on the way back to Ushuaia. Auckland Islands and South okay. Georgia. So these islands are known for their gigantic colonies of king penguins and the most famous photos of Antarctica that you see are actually from here. There's a sea of king penguins everywhere. Yeah. Obviously because it's double the duration, it's double the price. You have to account for the two days going, two days coming of sailing through Drake Passage. Yeah. That's in both the options, so you cannot skip that. Weather is so uncontrollable there. That's why in every itinerary you'll see it's tentative itinerary captain's call because we lost literally two days because of bad weather but of five days of expedition we only got three days of expedition so it's good to have extra room for extra days of bad weather where they cannot sail they cannot go to a destination so now after doing the 11 day options we personally feel the 21 day option is way more better you get more out of the whole struggle of getting to antarctica how do you find the best cruise between all the options that are going to antarctica nowadays the best way we found to do this research was to go to cruisemapper.com i'll put the link down below and see all the cruises that are leaving from ushuaia in each month that you're interested in going in and go into the details of the ship and see what does the ship look like what kind of capacity does the ship have? What does the rooms look like? It has maps of all the rooms in there. What the tentative itinerary might look like. It has so much details that you can pretty much research and dial in on a set of options that you might want to consider going out and pursuing prices for. What kind of... What are we looking at? This is our suite that we got. And we're gonna be here for 10 days. As soon as you come in, there's a bathroom, stand in shower, mm -hmm. full toilet here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show the shower. You can finally shower every day. Okay. Show the life jackets. Come on in. The life jackets. And some jackets truck. are pretty big actually. Important. It's a closet with life jackets. Okay. Hopefully we don't have to use them. The closet closet. This is a closet closet. Okay. Okay. Come on in. This is the bed. Oh, I jumped too hard. But this is a pretty nice bed. It's a massive TV, which hopefully we don't have to use. But the actually. decor is so modern, right? The decor is very modern. And... Full mirrors there's everywhere. A, there's a nice working station here. Let me turn on the lights. 
Yes. Is it flickering? No. Right. Yeah, no. Nice working station here. But who's gonna mm. work? More mirrors. There's Nespresso, man. I'm gonna have a good time. Decaf. Wait a second. Where's the garbage? <laughs> Don't need decaf. Nespresso, couch chilling area, but the best part is this window, man. This is pretty epic. Get the view. Yep. Of this ocean right here from from my room. Let's show you the extra <clears throat> things you get in your room. Yeah, this they're, is they're a... really spoiling us here. So Yo, let's what kind show. of room this is? I have no idea, man. This is the cheapest room we could get. <laughs> this category, I'll put it in the bottom what category rooms this yeah. is. We have a Juliet balcony, they say, and the full window goes down. We showed it to you, but the amenities you get. There's an espresso, of course. Then you get like a really good quality binoculars. Thank God they have bottles because we forgot our bottle. More storage here. Clippers, hanging stuff, blankets and throws. It comes with your laundry bag, your hair dryer. A safe. And then it comes with your fancy shoe tucking thing. There's a laundry list. You can do laundry? Yeah. Okay, for so paid though, it's yeah. paid. Let me show you little things in the room that I really like. First of all, all, all the toiletries are L'Occitane, which is my favorite brand. Then here you get a little vanity set. You get Q-tips, makeup removers, shower cap, manicure, nail filing thing. In case you show a hobo like me, really big, big, big towels. But the best part is this really soft it's so cozy really soft bathrobes if you don't have bathrobes it's not luxury that's true one of the main factors you have to think of while picking a cruise is the capacity of the ship antarctica has a regulation where only 100 people can do a landing at a time so if your cruise is has a capacity of 500 people they'll have land 500 people in five groups of 100 each so most likely you'll either get just one landing in the day if you have a smaller ship with a smaller group say 100 people then you can do 100 people with five different locations or three different landings in a day so you have more expedition time you get to do multiple landing also there are some cruises that do not even do landing so be very careful that your cruise has the option of you, you setting foot on Antarctica not just cruising along sometimes they label expedition as zodiac so what they do they put you on a zodiac and then you're just cruising around the islands you're not stepping foot make sure you know that your ship has included landing on Antarctica how to block these last minute deals first and the most important thing is you do not be in Ushuaia one month in advance and scouting for these deals. Those days are over. You can do this entire process online. Basically, you need to get in touch with these agents a few months in advance and get on their email list. The moment you get in touch with these agents, they'll ask you for a few questions that you need to know. What is your budget? Be realistic. They will ask you for the month of travel. They, you cannot give them the exact dates, unfortunately. That's not how it works. And the duration. You want to do the 11 days or you want to do the 21 days. You can also tell them that, hey, I want to make sure that the offer I get involves landing in Antarctica or crossing the 60 degree latitude. Once something matches your timeline and your budget, they will get back to you. They will tell you the room, the type of room, what's included, is the alcohol included, is the tip included, is the excursion. Some cruises even charge you per landing or per zodiac. So they'll tell you what's included, what's not. In our case, we didn't do really research and we got matched to a great cruise and with a luxurious ship and a, like a fantastic room. So this is how you can get breakfast in your room. You don't have to go seven in the morning for lazy people like us. Read that little note that we filled out last night. Now our breakfast is arrived. <laughs> it's here. So before we were leaving, we told our parents, "Don't worry, there's an internet on this ship. You get one gigabyte, a complimentary internet. If you wanna buy like half a gigabyte, like 500 MB, you pay 45 dollars. Mm. And if you wanna buy one." gigabyte more on top of the complimentary it's 80 dollars that's the most expensive internet you'll ever use and if you want 5 gb maybe to like upload a few stories to make some videos 350 dollars for that video we have disabled all our app all the data and only doing like just messages to our parents on whatsapp or if we're that we're alive and don't worry and turning off the wi-fi there's this epic tradition here in antarctica where you have to do a polar plunge which is basically jumping into this freezing cold water.
Okay. Once you say, okay, this ship matches my criteria, they have 48 hours for you to decide. So unfortunately, you cannot just use a credit card. They will yeah. send you a pre-authorized credit card form. And yes, it's totally secure. Might feel very unsecure, but you fill your credit card information, sign it, and then you send it to them. And that's how they make a payment. Do not sleep on those 48 hours because literally the agent is holding on to that cabin for you and after 48 hours is automatically released out into the market again. 48 hours, it can feel stressful, but if you've done your research, it won't be as long as it, it is in your budget. Yeah, and man, it's Antarctica. No matter what cruise or what duration you go, it is going to be amazing regardless. So book your cruise and now it's time to pack. We are just going to give you some quick tips. Do not think you're going to freeze in Antarctica. It's actually not that cold. It's their summer is very pleasant. There are lows. There are lows in the bottom too. Layer two is hiking pants. For my upper body, this Patagonia fleece. Layer three, these waterproof pants. And for my upper body, it's going to be this Parker toque. Gloves. That's it. Cruise most likely 99% of the time will give you a parka which you can keep with you. The boots will also will be provided by your cruise operator. Bring normal clothes that you'll be walking around in the ship, sunglasses, you need a lot of sun protection. So you need sunglasses, sunblock, and that's about it. So your sailing days, you're not doing an expedition and your time is basically divided into a bunch of activities. Today is day two on the world voyager the daily voyager newsletter has arrived into our cabin today's activities involves a lot of meetings i feel like i'm back at work or something after 10 meetings at every hour this is quite intense but that's what comes with going to antarctica first meeting i had to a mandatory briefing they're gonna explain all the regulations that we have to follow in antarctica i think that's very very important of course you want to keep everything pristine and i like the effort that they're putting or is required to put into doing this training for all their guests 11 a.m mandatory biosecurity meeting basically anything that you'll wear in antarctic they have to disinfect to make sure you don't bring any external elements to the the protected environment if your ship has tours to let's say like the engine bay and like where the captain sits and how the ship works things like that make sure you take part in that because it's really cool to learn about how a massive ship like this actually works thank you the main part of being in antarctica is actually stepping foot on antarctica now expeditions are generally done in two forms either they're done as landings or they're done as zodiac rides, which is kind of just cruising around and enjoying the views of Antarctica. Okay, I just saw the zodiacs getting prepared for the expedition that we're about to do. So the way the expeditions here work is that they are broken up into six groups. So we are in group D. At a time, three groups go out. They will announce, okay, group, group number D. It's time for you to go get ready for your landing. And once you hear that announcement, start heading down to the mudroom, which is where you put on your parka and your rubber boots and just get ready to go out into the wild. This is your launch pad, you get into the Zodiac and you start cruising towards your landing point. And the duration of typically these landings are generally around an hour long, just so that they can keep rotating. Once you get on the land, your expedition leader will explain to you where we are, what wildlife to expect. Yeah. They have already marked a trail for you. So the expedition team has already scouted that land yeah. and you have to stay in those trails. You cannot just go everywhere you want and they give you a timeline and you have all that time to walk around and explore on your own. These expeditions have very strict I wouldn't say regulations, but there are protocols to follow. Like you have to stay in the marked trail. No, no, they actually get mad at you if you yeah. skip these protocols. Yeah, they get really mad at you if you don't follow <laughs> at the At least protocols. in our ship they did, yeah. You cannot put your knee on the ground. You cannot put your backpack on the ground. You cannot just lay down on the ground. The only thing you're stepping foot is your rubber boot. Yeah. And that gets disinfected when you get on the ship every single time. So you're not bringing any outside debris on the ship or outside debris on Antarctica because there is an avian flu going on and they're trying to save the wildlife from this dangerous flu. That is why these protocols are highly mandatory. Poor penguins. You can do up to two to three landings in a day. Honestly, it gets exhausting. Even two, three landings because you're changing, constantly getting ready. The expeditions are like hour long and maybe 20 minutes to get to the land. So in a day, the three, four days of expeditions you have, you mm -hmm. are done. What an epic, epic, epic adventure we've had here. Holy shit. But for now, this is a good biting. Antarctica, that's the last piece of land that's crossing by behind us. 
It's called Machu Picchu Island. And uh, I'm sad to be leaving this place. I hope we come back to Antarctica one day with our kids. And if our future kids are watching this, uh, you better be thankful. <laughs> I hope you. I hope you guys see the beauty of Antarctica. It's still intact. The other countries have not um, done damage by mining it. It's still preserved, and so you still see the beauty of this place. I really hope you guys do. This is it. This is our video on Antarctica. Hope you get to go to this amazing place and have the most memorable time of your life. It's worth all the hassle to get there. It's so, yeah. so, so remote, so far to get, so pristine, so untouched that you feel like you're... In some other different planet, like altogether, you feel like you're living a Nat Geo documentary in the moment you're yeah. inside it living that moment yeah. right there watching these penguins that you grew up just watching on tvs walking them flap around and you know they're so cute and adorable and the whales and it's just it and, is and the the mammoth of icebergs you're gonna see oh like, my god they're, they're yeah. just so big you cannot even imagine how big they are uh, there's a huge debate about the negative impact the tourism that has in, in antarctica I would say, of course, there is a, a, a negative impact of these ships sailing and how they operate. Yeah. But now look at the other side that how will people protect something they have not seen? There would be no urgency to protect something they have not seen. They cannot relate to a place they have not seen. So once when people go there, there is more documentation, there is more research, uh, there is more ways people can find how to protect this. There is more urgency to protect it. So I feel the exposure these cruises or these expeditions are giving to this world yeah. is required for us to protect it. I hope it's not run over and by crowds and the regulations are more stricter and they can just have a balance. You know, that's what's needed. I really hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you in the next one.